Welcome to CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. great is our capacity for belief. Most people would probably claim they'll believe anything they can see, feel, taste, touch, or hear. In short, anything they could experience with their senses. But I will venture to say there are things in this world so fantastic, so incredible, that you or I could stare at them with our own two eyes and swear under oath that we were not seeing what was there. Sharky, you have got to support me on this. I can't. You've got to. They'll never take my word alone. I, I sound like a raving lunatic. I'm sorry, Mr. Burke, but I can't do it. You were down there with me. You saw it just like I did. No, I didn't. What? I didn't see it. Neither did you. We didn't see a thing. There's nothing down there. <laughs> mystery drama, The Ninth Volume, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Percy Granger and stars Michael Wager. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule, and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Energy is something we hear a great deal about these days. The kind of energy provided by oil and coal, that is. We hear debates as to how much of these precious substances are left. Some say supplies are virtually unlimited. Others say we'll run out in two to three hundred years. And the more dire prophets claim a mere 25 years. Whatever the figures, one thing is certain. As the situation becomes more urgent, some of those looking for new reserves are not going to let anything stand in their way. The year is 1998. We're at a drilling site on the western slopes of the Rocky Mountains. Okay, start her up. Start her up! Chucky? Yes, sir? What are the chances of that well getting down another 50 feet by noon? I don't know, boss. That's pretty solid stuff we're drilling through now. I don't understand this. Not in all my 42 years in this business as a company geologist told me to drill halfway up a mountain instead of on the low ground. He seems pretty confident. He's a young smart aleck, if you ask me. He isn't quite right. You mean in the head? Yeah. But he went to college. All right, get on the back of that rig, Sharky, and take it as fast as you can. But remember... Under no circumstances do I want any more delays. Morning, Milo. Morning, John. Coffee's on. Uh Uh-huh. Everything on the way okay today? How can you be so cheerful when we've only got less than a week left and no sign of oil? Less than a week? Five days, to be exact. I got a call from headquarters last night. I have decided against renewing the lease on this land. Oh, they're crazy. Do they know how much oil there is under that mountain? Well, John, forgive me, but you seem to be the only one still under the illusion that there's anything at all down there. We've drilled ten dry holes over the past two years. Ten dusters. And all of them have been based on your so-called calculations. That's right, because headquarters always pulled the pipe before we got down far enough. Do you have any idea how much drilling costs go up when you get down past the second mile? Milo, I'm going to make you a little wager. How many feet do you think the boys can take it down today? I asked Sharky for 50 by noon. That I will bet you $100 that by noon we've struck oil. A hundred bucks. How far down are we now? As of last night at quitting time, it was 
19,967 feet. Okay. I'll make that bet even more specific. I say that by the time we reach 19,980 feet, we'll be into the biggest pool of oil you ever saw. Well, it's only 13 more feet. That's right. Is it a bet, Milo? Well, I... Uh... Hey, Mr. Hawkins. Yeah? Mr. Burke. I think we've hit something. What? We've hit an air pocket. Are you sure? I think that's what it is. The rock bit's not meeting any resistance. None at all? No, sir. Are you holding in position? Yes, sir. Good. Get ready to cap. Keep the rig going, but wait till I give you a signal. I want to get company headquarters on the phone. Yes, sir. Well, Milo, I think you just saved yourself a hundred bucks. I want headquarters to put this over the intercom. When this geyser goes, everybody in that whole building is going to hear it. What? What was that? It sounded like the rig. The rig. It stopped. What's the matter? What's What's happened? Chucky, what's gone wrong? Ah, I don't know. Well, why did you stop the rig? Something weird is happening, boss. What? What are you talking about? Well, there was this, uh... I, I mean, I don't know how to describe it. The rotor was kicking up rock to us. You know, that yellowish granite we've been drilling through, and... Then all of a sudden, well, it changed color. Changed color? Yeah. And for that, you stopped the rig? Well... All right, I... now, wait a minute, Milo. Chalky, you uh, said the dust changed color to what? Well, I think it was kind of reddish. Ah, well, it sounds like we may have hit a stratum of clay. So where is this red dust? Let me see it. Well, now, that's what I'm trying to tell you. It isn't here anymore. It was in my hands. I was holding it in my hands, looking at it, and it just disappeared. You mean the wind blew it away? No. My hands were cut. There wasn't any wind. It just evaporated. It just evaporated. Disappeared. Yes, sir. Now I've got two nuts to deal with. As a scientist, I'd be rather curious to have a look at some of this dust. There ought to be still some of this stuff in the hole here. If I can just turn the pipe. Ah! Here we are. No, I, I don't know if I'd touch it, Mr. Perk. What if it's not safe? That looks harmless enough to me. Yeah, but you don't know. That's from nearly four miles down in the earth. It could be almost anything. That's why I had him stop the rig. I think my first guess was right. It seems to be clay of some sort. It's very odd, though. What would it? There had to be a seam of clay that deep in the earth. And the kind of rock formation we've been cutting through. Look. Look there. See what I mean? Hey, what happened to it? It just vanishes. That's what I was telling you. Chalky, bring me some kind of small container, will you? A, uh, a plastic bag, anything, so long as it's airtight. Okay. Why airtight? I think it must be the fresh air that's causing this stuff, whatever it is, to disintegrate. I I want to get a sample of it down a boulder to the university there and have it analyzed. Uh, this is the only airtight bag I can find, Mr. Perth. What is it? Well, it's from my lunch pail. Wife put my sandwich in it this morning. <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to do. Milo, will you give me a ride? Well, what about the well? I think we'd better leave the rig off until we find out what this stuff is. It's past one o'clock. We've lost the whole morning. How much longer is this friend of yours going to take? Milo, Professor Anderson is a very thorough person. He'll be finished when he's finished. This is ridiculous. You saw that dust disintegrate with your own eyes. So... Stuff comes up from the center of the earth and acts weird. Why not? If I was down there, I'd, I'd act weird. It doesn't raise your curiosity at all. Ah, Professor Anderson. Gentlemen. What did you find out? Were you able to analyze the powder? Uh, Mr. Hawkins, is that right? Yes, sir. You can call me Milo. Milo, how do you enjoy working with this practical joker here? Professor, what? You see, Mr. Hawkins... Mr. Perk here was one of my more intelligent students, so I assume he must be attempting humor when he comes around bothering a busy old man with a handful of powdered tile. Tile? That's right, John. 
What you asked me to drop everything for and analyze is nothing but common tile, such as one might use to roof a house. Uh, what's so special about it? Huh. What's so special about it, Professor, is that it comes from the bottom of a well shaft nearly four miles down inside a mountain. Oh, I see. So you weren't pulling my leg. Why, why did you ask me to keep the sample in an airtight container? It made my examination much more difficult. Because when that dust is exposed to fresh air, it disintegrates. Disintegrates? Uh, John, if that's true, do you realize how old this material could be? Your find must be investigated at once. Well, there's just one problem, Professor. How would you get down there? I don't know. I only know the site must be excavated. Uh, this powder could well be far older than all our previous estimates. It could be all that remains of a civilization we never even knew existed. Uh, which reminds me, John, I must keep this sample and run dating tests on it. Of course. Now, look, our company has a deadline. If we don't find oil, we've got to be off that land by the end of the week. Oh, but you can't continue to drill for oil, son. Don't you realize that by continuing to drill, you might destroy an invaluable clue to our past? I don't care about the past, Professor. I care about the future. And I don't see that the excavation of one more prehistoric Indian dwelling or whatever is going to make any difference. But getting to that oil, if it's there, will. The problem still is how to reach the site. Uh... Uh, just a minute. You're drilling up near Pine Creek, aren't you? Yeah, three miles up the mountain from there. Well, then I think there might be a way. There used to be a big silver mine at Pine Creek, remember? Ah, that's right. It was abandoned at the turn of the century, 95 years ago. Yeah, but, but the last shaft the miners dug struck a cave system. Of course. You took us there on a field trip. Oh, let me see. I should have some maps around here someplace. Ah, yes. Ah, here we are. Ah, this is the one I'm looking for. A cutaway view of the mountain. Now, <clears throat> you can see here how extensive the cave system is. Now, where exactly is the location of your drilling site? Ah, uh, right here. Ah, there you see. Trace lines straight down... 20,000 feet, that's your depth. Uh-huh. And it would place you here, the very deepest bowels of the mountain. But here you see the cave starting at the base of the mine shaft, which is already at the base of the mountain, and you give yourself a head start of nearly 15,000 feet. Uh, and, and look, here's a branch of the cave which comes practically to the point our drill has reached. But we could crawl there in a matter of hours. Now, just a minute, John. You seem to be forgetting who pays your salary. Milo, look. It's now one o'clock. Give me until starting time tomorrow, nine o'clock. What do we lose? A half a day. Uh, I think perhaps you'd better allow Mr. Perk to attempt the descent. My analysis showed traces of a rather strange substance. An adhesive, I believe. Well, why was it strange? Because it was entirely synthetic. And no primitives we're familiar with could possibly have known about it. I'm reminded of an old story about a cabin boy on a clipper ship. It seems he was always losing things. One day the captain asked him to clean his favorite clock. But when he asked to have it back, the boy couldn't produce it. The captain flew into a rage. I suppose it's lost, he said. Oh, no, sir, replied the cabin boy. I know exactly where it is. It fell out of my hands as I was cleaning it, and it's at the bottom of the ocean. The characters in our story know where something is, too. And like the captain's clock, the only problem is how to get to it. We shall dig deeper into all of this when I return with Act Two. There are many things which distinguish man from the so-called lower orders of the animal kingdom. And geologist John Perch is giving us a good demonstration of one of them right now. 
For man is the only animal who will deliberately set off to confront the unknown. John Perk has bought a few precious hours from a grudging Milo Hawkins, and with Sharky as his assistant, is descending into the mountain. Sharky, careful, this yeah. ledge isn't too wide. Is there room for both of us? Just barely. What time is it, Sharky? Uh, almost midnight. Sharky, huh? There it is. The end of the tunnel. Hand me the bag with the drill and the explosives. Here we go. While I'm drilling a hole for the dynamite, you get out the oxygen packs. That inflate one of those balloons to seal off the tunnel behind us. We don't want any fresh air getting into whatever is behind that rock. The tunnel's all sealed off, Mr. Burke. Good. Charge is ready. Now, let's just back up around this corner here. Yeah. Okay. okay. It'll just take a second to hook up the wires. Mr. Burke. Yeah? Are we sure we want to do this? I mean, are we sure we want to know what's back there? I'm a scientist, Sharky. Yes, sir. It's all wired. Push the plunger. Okay. Can you see anything? <coughs> this flashlight. No. Wait. Oh, through the dust, it... This looks like there's a chamber of some sort. Come on. Let's get back in there and set up a light. Here. Give me the light. You... You crank up the generator. Okay. Okay, turn her on. Good Lord. I don't get it, Mr. Perk. We must have taken the wrong turn. This isn't a prehistoric dwelling. It's somebody's house. We didn't take any wrong turns, Sharky. Well, look. See in the ceiling there? It's the nose of our rock bit from the drilling rig. Yeah, but look at this. A stove, a sink, even a dishwasher. Ah, and look, look in here, a dining room, rugs, a table, chairs. They look like they came right out of a department store. I don't like this. I wish we'd brought guns or something. What if this is some kind of criminal hideout? Four miles underground? Well, we don't know. Maybe it's a secret government project, a bomb shelter or something. But how was it built? I don't know. But there's got to be a reason why it's here. Let's have a look around. Maybe there's another way in which the survey charts don't show. Did you find anything, Mr. Perk? Nothing. How about you? Well, nothing. Fantastic. This entire house is encased in solid bedrock. But I saw bedrooms, a bathroom, even a TV set. Everything just like people lived here. Except that there are no signs of life anywhere. Hey, look at this. Glass in the windows, not even cracked. And curtains. I wonder if the plumbing works. Well, it's one, one way to find out, isn't it? <laughs> ah! It's the stuff that came out of the tap. It's black. black. What is it? Let me take that. No, Mr. Frank, don't. What I thought. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with this, Shocky. It is perfectly good crude oil. Oil? Yep. I don't believe what I'm seeing. A ranch house in the middle of the earth with oil coming out of the faucets. It's like magic. I think there may be a more rational explanation, at least for the oil. Did you see any stairs leading to the basement? Hey, I saw some stairs down the hallway. Come on, then. Let's follow these pipes. Pipes should be over on that far wall. What's that? No, no, I, I stepped in something. The whole basement floor seems to be covered with it. Shine your lights out. Hey, look. It's oil. 
Whole floor is three inches deep in oil. You see, I was right all along. There is oil in this mountain. We were right on target. And the only thing that stands between us and a gold mine is this house. <laughs> this solves everything. At last, we have proof that the oil exists. The company can go ahead and take a new lease on the land, and we'll have the time to try to find an answer to the mystery of this house. <laughs> We can leave the generator here. We've got to get back and stop Milo starting the rig up. What time is it? Uh, 2.57 a.m. Uh, we should just about make it. We'll inflate another balloon to seal the passage behind us before removing the first one. Are we all set to go? All set. Wait. Wait a minute. What's this? What? This door. I, I didn't see it before. Did, did you check it out? No, I thought you did. Well, we better have a look. Uh, Mr. Perk, this place gives me the creeps. I got this funny feeling. Why don't we just leave well enough alone? Help me move the light over. What kind of thing could survive down here without air? Mr. Perk, I'm frightened. Now, don't open this door. Get out of the way! Uh, what is it? A library. A library? Only a library. Room filled with books. You're not afraid of them, are you? I'm, I'm going to have a look. Maybe they'll provide some kind of clue. Mm -hmm. The owner is obviously a man of refinement and culture. Look at this. Complete works of Shakespeare, Milton. Plato's dialogues, Aristotle. Dante, Plutarch. Yeah, here are the more recent authors, Faulkner, Fitzgerald, Hemingway. Oh, this isn't offering us much in the way of clues. Huh. Did you find something? This reclining chair. My father-in-law's got one just like it in his den. Oh. <laughs> exactly like it. I, well, I mean, it's a different color. But it's the same model. Now, here's something. Whoever owns these books is obviously interested in history. Here's an entire case devoted to it. Herodotus, Tacitus, Livy. <laughs> Arranged in chronological order. Hollinshed's Chronicles. Gibbon's French Revolution. Well, who's this? Who? Someone named... D.V. Davis wrote A History of the World. I thought I... I never heard of him, Sharky. Well, don't look at me. I never heard of half those other guys you mentioned. D.V. Davis. Strange. Every other author on the shelf is familiar but him. Uh, Mr. Perk, you, you remember that feeling I had before? Well, it's coming back. I think we ought to go. Now, wait a minute. History of the World... By David Vladimir Davis. In nine volumes. But there are only eight volumes here. Well, there's a space. The ninth volume is missing. And the eighth volume covers... Oh, Lord. Sharky, you don't see the ninth volume of this set lying around anywhere, do you? No, why? Did you see it anywhere lying around the house? I don't know. I, I just... Try to remember. Well, there were some books on a table in the living room. I've got to find it. Here, yeah, but the time, it's after three. Forget the time. We've got to find the ninth volume to this set. Why? Because I am holding the eighth volume in my hand. I can feel its weight. I know it's real. It's not an illusion. The eighth volume of a nine-volume set of books on the history of the world. Our world as we know it and have lived it. And this eighth volume goes from the year 1815, the Battle of Waterloo, to the year 2000. But this is 1998. What is this guy, a fortune teller? Don't you see? There's still another entire volume to the set. I think I'm beginning to understand. Hey, wait, wait. What's that noise? Miss Perk, the house is beginning to shake. It's stopping. What was it? I'm not sure. But if we really are sitting on top of an oil field, it's a highly unstable situation. The vibrations from the dynamite must have disturbed things. We've got to get out of here. First, we have got to find that book. Why? 
Why? What's so important about some old fortune teller's book? That's not it, Sharky. That's not it at all. Don't you realize what we've discovered? This is... What's that smell? What? That smell. Hey, it's gas. There's gas escaping from somewhere. That explosion must open a leak in a gas pocket. Quick. Put this book in our bag. We'll have to come back later with masks to search for the ninth volume. Hi, Mr. Burke. There's daylight. At last. There's someone there at the mine entrance. Huh? Oh, God, it looks like Professor Anderson. John? John, is that you? Yeah. We're, we're coming, Professor. But, uh... Oh, what are you doing here? I must know what you found down there. I've been up the entire night running dating tests on that tile sample. At first, I couldn't believe it. But now I know there can be no doubt. That powder you brought me is over 12 billion years old. But we know the world's only four and a half billion years old. Well, I mean, that's what I heard Mr. Hawkins say once. Yes, that's what we've always thought, Mr. Sharkey, but... Evidently, we've been wrong. Now, tell me what you found. At the bottom of our well hole is a house. Even more perfectly preserved than the ruins of Pompeii. It has every modern appliance we're familiar with, from electric can openers to reclining chairs. It, it's just like the houses in the suburb where I live. The only difference is it is from a civilization so far in the past. that until now, not even a trace of it's been known. But what about all those books, Mr. Perk? Shakespeare and all. How'd they get there? Shakespeare? That's the most incredible thing of all, Professor. That 12 billion year old civilization was ours. Same names, same events, same people fighting the same wars, making the same inventions, creating the same masterpieces. Uh, probably making the same mistakes. Oh, so that's why you wanted the ninth volume of that history. That's right, Sharky, because whatever fatal mistake they made, whatever happened to cause their extinction, is going to happen to us, unless we can discover what it was and avoid it. The ninth volume? There isn't time to explain now, Professor. We've got to get back to camp and stop Milo before he turns on that rig. <laughs> In our beginning is our end, said T.S. Eliot. All living things duplicate themselves in reproduction with a phenomenal precision. So is it not at least possible, then, that nature repeats itself on a larger scale, too? In fact, on the largest scale of all. I shall return shortly with our final act. catch but glimpses of our past. The legend of Atlantis lives on. The mysteries of Stonehenge and the giant statues of Easter Island continue to baffle us. The most advanced and sophisticated civilizations are represented by mere shards of pottery stumbled on by accident. For all our research, there is still behind us a vast unknown. But now... A discovery, fantastic, terrifying evidence of a former civilization identical to our own. A civilization whose end was so cataclysmic, no trace had ever been discovered until now. Oh, Thank goodness we got here before you started that rig. John, I've got a bone to pick There is you. no time for that. Sharky? Yes, sir? Get out there and get the rig started. Oh, wait, you've got to listen to us. I've got a better idea, John. Why don't you listen to me for a change? I got a little phone call last night from headquarters. You remember them, don't you? They wanted to know how things were going. Understandably, they're getting a little anxious, considering the fact that we've got only four days before our lease here is up. And you can imagine my chagrin when I had to tell them the rig wasn't even running, that my geologist, who's supposed to be telling me where to drill and told me to stop so he could go down and nose around some prehistoric Indian hut. That's not what's down there. I don't care what's down there. 
My job is to drill for oil. Do you know who's arriving today? Sid Dobbs. Sid Dobbs. That's right. The company executive vice president. He wants to know what the heck is going on here. He's flying up personally to take over the operation. Well, if you would let me get a word in, Edgeworth, I can tell you what's going on. All I want to know is why we haven't struck oil. Well, that's one thing you don't have to worry about. There is oil down there. We saw it. You saw it? I stuck my finger in it. I tasted it. It's there, right where I said it would be. The drill is no more than 20 feet above the strike at this very moment. Well, well then, then, let's get it going and have that oil coming up for Mr. Dobbs. So he won't have our heads in a sling. Charlie? Yes, sir. No, wait a minute. You can't start the rig, not until we've had a chance to go back down there. Go back down? What for? Milo, what we've discovered, it wasn't... Well, it wasn't what we expected. There's a house down there, all right, but it's... Modern. I mean, well, not modern exactly. <laughs> it's 12 billion years old. But Sharky, what's he talking about? I know, I know it sounds incredible, but Professor Anderson ran dating tests on that powder we took him, and it is 12 billion years old. Ah, so you found a modern 12 billion year old house. But the important thing is the book. That's why we've got to go back down. Oh, I see. What? The ninth volume. It's a history of the world from the year 2000 on. John, I'm doing my best to stay with you, but you aren't making it easy for me. Milo, now listen. There is a house down there from a civilization that existed 12 billion years ago that was ours. It was us. Don't you see what that means? We're being given the chance to look into the future. I see. Sharky? Yes, sir? You've been awful quiet. Yeah, I guess so. You were down there with Mr. Perk, weren't you? Yes. You went all the way with him? You saw everything he saw? Yes. And you saw this house he's talking about? No. No, I didn't. What? Sharky! You didn't see a 12 billion year old house that looks just like ours, that has a set of books that's going to tell us what's going to happen? No, sir, I didn't. I didn't see any of that. That's what I thought. No! Fuck you, what are you saying? Milo, look in this bag. We brought up the eighth volume of that set. See, look, it goes from 1815 to the year 2000. Now, now will you believe me? There's nothing in here but a pile of dust. What? Oh. Good grief, we're in such a hurry. I must not have sealed the container properly. Ah. Look, Milo, you've got to believe me. Twelve more hours is all I need. But we've got to go back down there. Uh, hello, Hawkins here. He has? Okay, I'll be right over. The company plane has just landed with Mr. Dobbs. I'm going to meet him, and I want that rig in full operation by the time we return. Milo, listen to me. Remember when we were at Anderson's lab? He said his analysis of the powder showed traces of a substance that primitive man couldn't have known about. Oh, yes. Yes, I meant to tell you. Professor Anderson called yesterday, right after you and Sharky had gone down into the mine. He'd run another test and discovered what it was. But doesn't that convince you I'm telling the truth? It was mayonnaise, John. Mayonnaise? That's right. Remember? We used a sandwich bag from Sharky's lunch pail. Mayonnaise. Sharky. Mr. Perk, please, let me get by. Why did you lie? I gotta get the rig started. Are you crazy? Do you realize what we'll be destroying? Mr. Perk, I don't want to talk about it. What are you afraid of? Going back down there, we'll run hoses down to pump out the gas. Anyway, you don't have to go if you don't want to. I can find somebody else. I know it's risky, but it's too important not to take the chance. Mr. Perk, please let me go. Not until you tell me why you lied to Milo. Don't you see what this discovery could mean? The chance to look into the future, the chance to avoid making the same mistake twice. How? What? How are we going to avoid it? Don't you want to know your own fate? No. I don't want to know. 
An entire civilization may perish because of your cowardice. Why won't you support me? Didn't you see that house? Of course I saw it. Did you take a good look at it? What are you getting at, Shucky? What's the matter? It's a modern house. So? It's not ultra-modern. It's not some weird, futuristic contraption filled with gadgets we've never seen. It's modern. It's contemporary. Don't you see what that means? This is as far as we're coming. This is the end of the line. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen soon. And it's probably too late to stop it. We can try if we know what it is. I don't want to know what it is. I don't want to know. So you won't support me. When Sid Dobbs arrives, you won't back me up. <sighs> Sorry, Mr. Burke. You'll think I'm a raving lunatic. Shocky, why isn't that rig going yet? Oh, man. Hello, John. Hello, Sid. Mr. Dobbs, I'm sorry. I, I gave orders for the rig to be running. That's all right, Milo. Forget it. The rig isn't going on. It isn't? No. We've decided to suspend operations altogether. Suspend operations? Our lease is up in four days. It'll take us that long to pack up and be out of here. And as far as I'm concerned, the sooner we never see this place again, the better. Sid, uh, when you say suspend operations, you mean you intend to pull a pipe... We sure can't afford to leave it behind. You can't do that. What? Why not? Removing the pipe would expose the hole to the fresh air and... Well, there's something down there that would be destroyed. By fresh air? Uh, Sid, we struck some old clay rock yesterday. That's why the rig isn't going. John insisted on exploring in a nearby cave. Sid, you have to listen to me. Sharky's right. There is oil down there. We're within 20 feet of it. Are you asking me to start the rig going again? No, no, no. I'm asking you to take a new lease on the land and hold off making the strike until I've found... until I've completed my explorations. John, I remind you that we've been listening to you for two years. There's no more time. Let's all run out. You are also sitting on top of something infinitely more important than oil... And it's going to be destroyed. John, I think you need some sleep. That's your problem. Now, wait a minute. Just a minute, Milo. I'm curious about these continued illusions, John. I might give you one more chance. I will accept your considered judgment as a rational scientist that the oil is there and hold off drilling. If you'll tell me what's down there that's so important. <laughs> Judgment as a rational scientist. Oh, never mind, Sid, never mind. Go ahead and pull the pipe. Okay. Milo, have the men pack up. We'll pull the pipe and dismantle the rig in the morning. John, why didn't you just tell Mr. Dobbs what it was you'd seen? He wouldn't have believed me, Professor Anderson, not... Not without Sharky's corroboration. So? You're going to start pulling the pipe in the morning in a golden opportunity and we'll be lost forever. No, not exactly. Oh? What chance remains? Surely you don't intend to stop them at gunpoint. Oh, no, no. I'm going to try going down again. She said there was gas leaking and that the ground was beginning to shift. We can wear masks against the gas and as for the shifting, well, we'll just have to take that risk. You said we. That's why I came to you, Professor. I need someone to go with me. It's a two-man job. I, I, I don't know who else to turn to. I, I know you. I mean, oh, I, I know what you're trying to say, but on a mission of such importance, I, I wouldn't hesitate. Not for one minute. And then you'll come with me. Yes, of course I will. Good. We've got to start at once. There's barely enough time as it is. Sharky, I can't say I'll be sorry to see the last of this place. Something about it always did give me the willies. That you better lock the gate for the last time. Oh, okay, Mr. Hawkins. 
<laughs> hey, wait a minute. What's that? What? The stuff on your boots. The black stuff. Why, that... That's the oil. Oil? Where'd it come from? Well, that's what I was trying to tell you all along. The oil that's down there. Mr. Perk and I saw it, and we waded through it. Sharky, get Mr. Dobbs from the office. Why? You've got to start up that rig. There is oil, Sharky. Oil. Do you know what that means? Ha! Our future's golden. Here. Here it is, Professor. This is amazing. A house in every detail, exactly like our own. From a duplicate civilization that inhabited the Earth 12 billion years ago. Oh, how much it could teach us. Wait a minute. Sharky said he thought he'd seen some books in the living room. This way. Oh, look. Over there on the table. Yeah, this is it. The History of the World by D.V. Davis. Volume 9. Do you realize what this will mean, Professor, when we open this book? Yes. I wonder what it is, John, that we're to learn about ourselves from ourselves. What's that? Professor, they started the drill. The whole house! It's, it's collapsing into dust! a legend in classical mythology about the Sibyl, a prophetess who lived appropriately enough to our story in a cave. She offered to sell nine prophetic books to Tarquin the Proud, the last of Rome's legendary kings. He refused, for he felt her price was too high. So she burned three of the books and offered him the remaining six for the same price. Again, Tarquin refused. And again, Sybil burned three of the precious volumes. Finally, he bought the last three for the price of the original nine. But because of his stingy short-sightedness, mankind lost forever his chance to know what the future holds. I shall return shortly. to know what fate has in store for us. That would probably depend on whether or not we had the ability to act on that knowledge and to alter the impending course of events. But would it be a simple matter of avoiding a single fatal mistake? Or would we discover a future as complex as human nature itself and as unchangeable? Our cast included Michael Wager, Court Benson, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you've enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian McCarthy in the YouTube search bar. Until then, thanks for listening. Thank you.